All right, good evening. We're going to call to order the Tuesday, December 19th meeting of the Cordon Madera Town Council. Can we have a roll call, please? Council Member Casisa is absent. Council Member Lee? Here. Council Member Thomas? Here. Vice Mayor Ravazio is also absent from this meeting. Mayor Beckman? Here. And can we have a salute to the flag, please? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Thank you. We're going to have open time for public comment. This is an opportunity for any members of the public to comment on any items not on tonight's agenda. Uh, I do not see any uh, public comment in person here tonight. Lorena, do we have any hands up um, from folks who are tuning in? We do have a hand raised from Patty Stolier. Great. Good evening, everybody. Um, I just wanted to quickly announce that Age-Friendly Court of Madeira will be mailing a 2024 survey to everyone in town over 60. It's also going to be available online to be completed online. So we want to make sure we're getting everybody's input. It's been almost 10 years since we um, did the last survey and in the interim, we've had a plague and a lot of different things. So it would be nice to see how people's opinions and needs have changed. Uh, we're just finalizing it now, and we hope to get it distributed towards the end of January. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Patty. Lorraine, do we have any other hands up online? We do not have any additional hands online, and we didn't receive any email public comment for open time. Great, thank you. So we'll close open time. We have no presentations tonight, so we'll move on to the consent calendar. These are items that are routine or have been previously discussed and do not require further discussion. Any member of the council, staff, or the public can pull an item from the consent calendar. Would any members of staff of the uh, council like to pull a consent item? Uh, do not have any members of the public present here tonight. Do we have any hands up online or any items uh, from that staff would like to pull? We do not have any hands raised or emailed public comment from this item. Great, thank you. We'll bring the consent calendar back to council for a motion. I move to, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the, the, the A. Uh, A through E. A through, A. Yeah, A through E. 4A through 4E are moved. We have a second. Second. <clears throat> okay. Council Member Casisa is absent. Council Member Lee? Yes. Council Member Thomas? Yes. Vice Mayor Ravazzi was absent. Mayor Beckman? Yes, thank, thank you. you. Motion carries. That concludes the consent calendar. We'll move on to public hearings. Tonight's first public hearing is item 5A. Uh, this is consideration and possible action to adopt ordinance number 1032, uh, amending the Corte Madera Municipal Code uh, to provide uh, for parklets. And I will turn it over to staff. Good evening, honorable mayor and members of the council. Uh, this evening, uh, you will be holding a public hearing for the consideration and possible action to adopt an ordinance to establish regulations uh, for parklets in Old Cord Madera Square and also consideration of a resolution to establish the fees for the Old Cord Madera Square parklet program. Uh, so the, the council held a public hearing on this item on December 5th. And at that meeting, uh, several members of the public spoke, spoke in support of parklets in general. And the council introduced this ordinance with a unanimous vote and several modifications were made um, to the ordinance that was introduced by the council at that meeting. Uh, so this slide shows those changes, um, section 12.500.040. 12 B1 was revised to remove the requirement that a qualified business be zoned commercial. And this change was made because Tito's taco shop was included in the boundaries and that property is zoned residential. In addition, section 12.50.080C was revised to allow amplified sound within parklets. Um, music, including sound, will be allowed during the hours of operation of the business and they cannot exceed the decibel levels that is allowed per the noise ordinance. 
And also section 12.50120 was revised to extend the grace period from four months to six months. In addition, exhibit A to the ordinance uh, was also revised. Um, next slide, please. Um, and the boundaries were revised to include three additional parcels. And again, this change was made to include Keto's Taco Shop. Uh, the parcels that were added to the boundaries um, are towards the northern portion of this map. And it includes 74 Corte Madera Avenue, 70 Corte Madera Avenue, and 60 Corte Madera Avenue, which is the location of uh, Keto's Taco Shop. Next slide. Um, at the December 5th meeting, the town council also discussed uh, the fees for the program and the council continued uh, the, the fee component, component to a date certain to the December 19th meeting. And based on the direction uh, provided by the council on December 5th, uh, changes were made to the draft resolution. Uh, the licensing fee was modified from $1.25 per square foot per month to 50 cents per square foot per month for the first year, and then a dollar per square foot per month for each subsequent year. Um, the, addition, the other fees of the program include an application fee of 1500. Uh, this is a deposit that is meant to cover the staff time to review the application. And there's also a security deposit of 2500, um, which would be returned to the business after the parklet is removed. And the draft resolution that establishes the fees are included as attachment two. And the changes to Schedule F of the fee schedule are included as Exhibit A to that resolution. Uh, there are three options available to the council as shown on the slide. Uh, the first would be to adopt Ordinance Number 1032, amending the, the Municipal Code to add a new chapter, 12.50, uh, to regulate parklets, and also to adopt Resolution Number 53-2023, to amend Schedule F of the Master Fee Schedule by adding fees related to the old Corte Madera Square Parklet Program. Option two is to adopt the ordinance and resolution with modifications. And option three is to direct staff to return with additional information and analysis. Um, that concludes my presentation. Um, would like to point out that we did receive one public comment after the packet was published that was provided to the council and also is available on the website, available for questions. Perfect. Thank you so much, Martha. Uh, any questions from council members since we heard this item a couple weeks ago? Um, just one little question. Um, regarding the noise and the specific number of decibels allowed, um, how is that determined? Let's say there's a call that says this music is too loud. Um, will the um, property owner be obligated to prove with a decibel counter that at that time it was not that loud? That would be challenging to do because they likely are not taking decibel readings throughout the time that the music is playing. So if we did receive a complaint, uh, it likely would be after hours when, uh, when staff would not be available to go take a decibel reading ourselves. So likely the complaint would be made to potentially to the Central Marin Police Authority. Um, but uh, staff would speak with uh, whatever business owner that the complaint was made to and um, re remind them of what the, the what is allowed for music. Um, and if it becomes a problem, then you know, staff would likely attend some of the events to take readings as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Sounds good. So um, without further questions from council members, we'll open it up for public comment. I do not see any members of the public present wishing to comment. Do we have any folks online or via email who'd like to comment? We don't have any emailed public comment aside from the one that was mentioned. Um, we have a hand up from David McPherson. Great. Good evening, everyone. Uh, well done, staff. I obviously am I'm in favor of adopting the ordinance <clears throat> with the modifications. I did want to comment, since I've represented bars and restaurants for 40 years, that in places like San Francisco, when there are noise complaints, typically what will happen is certain police officers will actually have decibel readers. And if a problem uh, arises on a regular basis, uh, someone from the police department or in th this case, it could be staff would have a decibel reader and they would come back from time to time to check and see uh, that the business is compliant. Thank you very much. 
Great. Thank you very much, Dave. Do we have any other hands up, Lorena? We do not have any additional hands raised. Okay, fantastic. I'll close this public comment and bring this item back to the council for discussion and a possible motion. I, I, I will share a, a quick thought, which is just I just want to thank our staff and the Planning Commission uh, and also the residents and business owners who got involved and helped shape this item. That was super helpful. Um, and I feel like we had a really robust and productive public discussion around this. So I'm I'm happy with where we've landed. Excellent. So I'd like to make a motion then uh, to adopt ordinance number uh, 1032, amending the Court of Madera Municipal Code to add a new chapter 12.50, Old Court of Madera Square Parklet Program to establish regulations for parklets located in Old Court of Madera Square and to adopt resolution number 53-2023, amending the master fee schedule to establish new fees related to the Old Court of Madera Square Parklet Program. Second. Second. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Casisa is absent. Councilmember Lee? Yes. Councilmember Thomas? Yes. Vice Mayor Vazio is absent. Mayor Beckman? Yes. Thank you, the motion carries. Thank you. We'll move on to item 5B, which is consideration and possible introduction of an ordinance to amend a uh, section of the municipal code regulating hours of operations in town parks and the riding of bikes um, and other wheeled vehicles on town lawns. Turn it over to staff. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Mayor and Council members. Um, I will be handling the next two items for you this evening. And we also have our town manager and town attorney available to answer questions. Um, one point of note for this ordinance as it relates to parks is that a broader update of, of this municipal code is, is planned for next year, but staff and our town attorney felt it was important to address two specific issues at this time. Um, it was reviewed by our Parks and Recreation Commission at its December 4th special meeting, and they vetted recommendations from, from staff and had additional recommendations to consider. And we are bringing this to you this evening. We did split the discussion up um, for public comment at the commission level, but I'll, I'll go over both sections and then council can ask uh, questions or, or split the discussion if, if you prefer. Um, the first portion is to address open hours of our town parks. Uh, currently, it um, our town parks are open from uh, 6 a.m. to midnight. Um, the municipal code states that no uh, persons shall be in the park from midnight to 6 a.m. Midnight has been a bit problematic for enforcement because it limits the ability of our law enforcement to um, break up uh, uses that are or disturbing the peace of the neighborhood if the municipal code states that people are allowed to remain in the park until midnight. Um, our neighboring jurisdictions have hours related to sunset, either sunrise to sunset, half an hour before sunrise to and half an hour after sunset. Staff did recommend that we um, consider matching our neighboring jurisdictions. It makes it simplified for our law enforcement that, that contracts with all of those agencies, Larkspur and San Anselmo. Um, in the commission's review of this item, it they, the commission felt that this was generally a bit too broad and could potentially be difficult to enforce considering we do have facilities within town park that are open later than sunset considering the lighted tennis courts and our restroom facilities that are also open. Um, and they recommended that we match those hours and just move the closure to 10 p.m. They felt 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. was a was a fair um, amount of time to allow people to be in the park to clean up after their rentals, um, picnicking. The the people often remain in the park late during the heat of the summer, um, and it just felt like that would be uh, a more simplified approach to what they felt was an overly broad and nebulous um, tying it to the sunset hours. Also, um, Staff feels that Town Park in particular is more of a commons compared to other parks and local jurisdictions where people are traversing the park to walk their dogs, to connect to our walking paths. We have limited parking in the Eastman lot, so people can park in the Pixley lot and walk across the park to Cafe Verde or uh, Menke Park, at other places as well. So it has sort of a different use and feel than other um, 
similar, similarly sized parks in other jurisdictions that are more insular. So staff was comfortable with the commission's recommendation to recommend the closure be from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. And if council is in agreement with that, we can also revisit that in the spring or summer um, when we bring the rest of the ordinance back for update and council can or staff can report back on any noted um, issues with, with that recommended timeframe. Is there any questions on that portion or should so, I proceed to the next? Yeah, I had a quick question with that. So that's just town park and then the other ones would be sunset to sunrise or is it across it is, it is the recommended board? This time for all parks and, and commission did note that um, it may be warranted to take a look at different hours for different parks in the future. But uh, right now there haven't been complaints received from loud late gatherings at the satellite parks only. Okay. No, I was just asking clarity. Thanks. No, it, it's a good question, and the commission did raise that concern. Oh, correct. Thank you. To our town attorney. Um, <laughs> I did want to note from the staff report, any events sponsored by the town of Corte Madera, such as movies and music in the park, would be exempt from the published operation hours, as would any event or activity for which a user has applied for and received a special event permit. Um, right. And uh, currently, there is no change. We we do not allow amplified music in the park. So a lot of what the CMPA does respond to is amplified music after hours, and they are able to ask groups to to cut the the amplified music. And uh, our nord we would lean on our noise ordinance for any enforcement related to that. But they this would give our our code enforcement and law enforcement the ability to ask large groups to disperse after the posted hours. Any additional questions? Um, let me clarify what you just said. So there's no amplified music in the parks at any time. Un unless there's a special event permit or a town event, uh, such as music or movies in the park. Okay. but And that's with um, any picnic rental or anything that um, it's communicated in, in the permit process for applying for it a picnic rental or a special event in the park, they would be um, educated on, on that. And we may have signage addressing that if, if that continues to be an issue. Thank you. Great, if there's no other questions on operating hours, do you wanna cover uh, bikes as well? I think I will do that, yes. Right. Um, the second portion of, of the ordinance um, involves adding an additional clause to the section of the ordinance um, to add, no person shall ride upon any motor vehicle as defined in California Vehicle Code Section 415, bicycle, electric bicycle, unicycle, skateboard, or roller skates in town parks other than on established pathways. This is a new addition to this section, and it stems from... Um, Behaviors that, that staff and park users have uh, noticed and made the town aware of and um, complaints that we've received from unexpected uses in the park, such as um, people riding through the fields and instead of maintaining their bicycles on established pathways through the park. And the concern um, is twofold. There's safety issues from uh, families and small children gathering in the park that aren't expecting a bike speeding through what is essentially picnic areas. The second and issue as far as staff is concerned is the investments that staff has made into enhancing and maintaining um, and rehabilitating our, our fields that are sports fields and play, play spaces. Bikes, electric bikes, mountain bikes, they're, they're heavy um, and a person riding on top of one is even heavier and it causes ruts in the soft dirt when the, the ground is damp and those ruts dry into undulations that is difficult for staff to maintain. It's difficult for staff to even out. Um, and it, it creates problems with the fields that are trip hazards, their safety issues. Um, and it's really just about protecting infrastructure and the underlying infrastructure, our irrigation systems um, could be damaged from these ruts. 
So safety and damage to town infrastructure is what we're trying to address with this ordinance amendment. Um, and with that, we would have outreach to the schools to tell their students to please, uh, parents and students, please maintain riding to school on the established pathways and our users of the fields, the, the soccer teams that rent the, the fields for practices, they would let all of their athletes know that you would need to ride your bike on the established pathways and then walk your bike to your assigned field. So we're not saying no bikes on the field because we recognize that kids need to get to the practice fields, but we would ask that people please walk their bikes to their practice locations, their picnic locations. Um, I think that covers the concerns. Did I miss anything? Awesome. Thank you very much. Any questions from council on uh, either of these two policy items? Yeah, I just want to. So uh, people with mobility needs would still be able to have, vehicle, you know, wheelchair assisted wheelchairs and stuff. Correct. correct. Uh, actually, our town attorney made um, some recommended language adjustments to that clause, and that was based on concerns reflected from the Parks and Recreation Commission's discussion on the item. They were concerned that without proper clarification, people could think that um, manual wheelchairs, electric wheelchairs, strollers, wagons loaded up with picnic supplies might not be wanted on the fields. And that was not what we were trying to address. So these are ridden vehicles with a person on them that aren't for mobility needs, right? And but that is why our ease of transport. Recreational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and part of the other commissioner's discussion on the item also included uh, requests for additional rules and educational signage requirements that park be used safely, a potential speed limit, a requirement to yield to pedestrians in wheelchairs. And they are aware that the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee and as well as town staff and code enforcement and law enforcement are all um, working on those issues and that will be addressed separately from this ordinance in the future. Can I ask one more question? Um, if we move forward with this, while we would let kids take their bikes near the playing fields, would it, you know, is there any additional signage that would help inform? And then the other one is, is that those boundaries where we would like, could we provide more lockable bike stands? Would that be something that staff would like to think about that might help aid in, in, in that particular issue what was the question? Thank you, Council Member Lee. That, is, um, that did come up in the conversation was that we, until those needs are addressed with additional safe spaces to lock bicycles with bicycle theft being a common occurrence, we didn't want to separate park users from their bikes without that. So that that is why the compromise of walking the bikes on the fields. Um, and I'll, I'll talk to staff and public works about possibility of address lockable bike infrastructure. Thank you. Excellent questions. Okay, uh, my only question, um, the staff report mentions that the Parks and Rec Commission also recommended considering additional rules around things like uh, speed limits for bikes and e-bikes and requirement to yield to pedestrians and wheelchairs, which I think sound like fantastic ideas. And I was just curious on timeline for that, is that something that you envision like when we come back next year and, and do the whole ordinance? Okay, cool, um, great. That was my only question. Um, okay, if there are no other questions, we will open this up for public comment and seeing no uh, commenters present. Uh, Lorena, do we have any online or email comments? We don't have any emailed comments. Um, we have a hand raised from David McPherson. Good evening again. Um, I was not aware actually that the Central Marin Police Authority was having problems breaking up problematic groups after 10 p.m. But if, in fact, that has occurred, then obviously this ordinance has some application. I just want to point out that several times a year when we are leaving the town center, we will walk through uh, town park, as, as Rebecca indicated, or ride our bikes through town park because it, it provides just a, a safer way that's off the streets. And uh, sometimes that's after 10 p.m. I don't have a problem doing that, despite knowing that there will be an ordinance saying don't go through the park, because I, I can't imagine law enforcement having a problem with a 
my wife and I uh, transversing the town park after 10 p.m. But I do want to point out that, um, you know, that is a use that, that we have used uh, done over the years. With respect to signage, I think it is important to uh, have signs. But I, I hope that what we can do is come up with a, attractive signs that that are sort of universal that address all of the various rules that apply in the park rather than just, uh, you know, creating a new sign for having no electric bikes or no bikes off of uh, the paths. And I suppose, again, if in fact uh, Park and Recs and staff have been dealing with electric bikes in particular, which are much more powerful, uh, tearing up the grass uh, than, than this ordinance, uh, is appropriate, and I would support it. I would just remind um, town staff that uh, that in, that do enforcement that uh, the police can also cite uh, anyone that's using an electric bike inappropriately on the grass for destruction of public property in addition to violating this ordinance. Thanks again for your time. Aside from that, we do not have any additional hands raised. Great. Thank you, Lorena. I'm seeing no further public comment. I'll close public comment and bring it back to council for discussion and a possible motion. Any thoughts? I just have a little question about um, people, um, as the last caller was saying, that come through the park. So when we're talking about riding the bike through the park, we're talking about is that's not on any path. That's just through, when you say through the park, you mean over the grass. That's correct. Okay. Uh, they would be maintained on established pathways. Okay. Of which there are several that traverse the park. Right. So then there is a way to get through the park on the paths, but the question is about the timing of that. If it's, after 10. Correct. Um, the, the ordinance mainly addresses uh, congregating in the park after 10 p.m. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, if I, if yes, I can, yes. I just, I think it's pretty clear the purpose and intent is really to uh, address people congregating, playing music, whatever they're doing in the park at a well after dark. And it's not intended to sort of preclude people from circulating quickest route to get home or something like that. Um, and so I think that's how we intend to um, enforce that regulation. Okay. Great. To, to me, it's loitering or use of the actual park versus transitory kind of moving through it, mm -hmm. right? Is really what it's there to help address. Great. 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 Any other thoughts, Charles? No, just that I heard residents and uh, to David's kind of point, it, it is something that um, has come up in the community and it is a, a good way to try to address some of these issues in an appropriate manner. So um, that I, I guess I can uh, make a motion to uh, introduce, do, do I make a motion to introduce it? Yeah, make a motion to introduce the ordinance to amend section 9.28. Point zero two zero conduct on public property amending operational hours of town park and restricting the riding of bicycles, electrical bicycles, and other motorized vehicles in parks to establish pathways. I second. Okay. Just one question. In terms of the language uh, updates that you had mentioned, um, we might want, you'll take care of that for when it comes back in the next meeting. Okay, cool. Got a motion in a second, so I'll call the vote. Um, Councilmember Casisa is absent. Councilmember Lee? Yes. Councilmember Thomas? Yes. Vice Mayor Ravazio is absent. Mayor Beckman? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Great. Thank you. That concludes our public hearings and brings us to our first business item, which is 6A. Consideration and possible adoption of resolution number 56, 2023, approving a revised parks and recreation fee schedule for the coming fiscal year. Thank you, honorable mayor and council members. I 
just switching screens quickly. Um, I have the staff report open and ready to share if there's any um, charts or tables that you would feel it'd be beneficial to display during the discussion. Um, but again, this is the annual fee resolution that is brought before the Parks and Recreation Commission and then uh, potentially recommended to council for adoption annually. This year, uh, staff proposed removing program fees from the ordinance, uh, the resolution as it's strictly um, a facilities fee schedule and um, they felt it wasn't appropriate to have program some program fees in this resolution as it hindered their ability to adjust to changing um, staffing and, and costs. So therefore, the, the resolution before you is just revised fee schedule for fiscal year 24-25 for parks and recreation facility fees. The commission went through the fees section by section. Um, there were minimal changes recommended to what um, was presented um, by staff. And the primary um, addition was the addition of a commercial rate as, as Larkspur and other surrounding jurisdictions include a commercial rate for um, several of the facilities. And we did not have that. Um, for the community center main hall, there um, was a small increase from $215 to $235 for residents and for non-residents, $275 to $295. And for Corte Madera and Larkspur nonprofits, $125 to increase to $130. And then the addition of a commercial rate of $335. Um, staff recommended the addition of, of clarifying that uh, nonprofits be Corte Madera, Larkspur nonprofits, such as uh, the CYO leagues, the Twin Cities Little League, the Twin Cities Softball League, Southern Marin Lacrosse, um, who are key renters of our facilities and sports fields. And uh, those fees and picnic rental and tennis court fees have not increased since 2014-2015, and the community center main hall rental rate had not been increased since 2018-2019. For outdoor facilities, um, oh, sorry, for the Neil Cummins School Gymnasium, which the, the town handles the rentals for after hours, there was no change proposed to it other than the addition of a commercial rate. Um, and that is in line with what Larkspur currently charges. They manage the hall gymnasium and they have a commercial rate and our, our rental rates match what um, Larkspur charges for the use of the hall gymnasium. So we wanted to match across the board and add the commercial rate. For town picnic areas, um, there's a small increase requested for the residents moving from 30 to $35 an hour for a full day rental, non-residents 40 to $45 and Corte Madera Larks for nonprofits. Um, that's a new addition and the charge would be $35. And then the commercial rate would go from $35 to $45. For the use of the athletic fields, um, staff proposed a $200 per hour commercial use rate. Um, the All other rates will stay the same. And our, our director noted that the primary renter of those fields is our, our sports users, the Corte Madera Larks for nonprofits that I previously mentioned. And they rent the fields for almost the majority of, of the sports seasons. So any... Um, any other requests that would come up for a rental is typically from a commercial user monetizing the space for an event. And so we felt it was appropriate to add the commercial rate for, for those uses or for possibility of having a summer camp not affiliated with the town who wanted to use the space for one of their camps. Um, from Mankey Park, staff proposed a per hour increase to the rental of the whole area. Um, there's no partial breakout of that. It's it's the whole area for for rentals for special events, and a special event permit would apply to the use of Menke Park. And the rate would increase from fifty five dollars to sixty for residents, sixty five to seventy five for non residents. Puerto Madera Larks for nonprofits, fifty five increased to sixty, and no commercial rate. Um, 
there's an additional fee associated with special event permits included. The tennis and pickleball courts, staff has proposed uh, to increase the cost of full year and half year key prices. Those rates have not been touched or discussed for increase since 2014, 2015. And there have been escalating costs with <clears throat> the production of the keys and with the staff time involved with maintaining the courts. So the proposal is that the current year, um, $48 for full year, go to $45 for full year, $25 for half year, would go to $35 for a half year for residents and 50 to 55 for a full year for non-residents and $35 per hour to $45 per hour for a half year. Um, Cove Park is remaining the same and then they had added the commercial rate that I discussed and that's primarily for the request of special use, <laughs> excuse me, for summer camps. The other issue um, that remained the same was um, the discounted use of Parks and Recreation Department programs and facilities by employees of the Town of Corte Madera, Central Marin Police Authority, and Central Marin Fire Department, and maintaining the addition uh, recommended by the Commission and supported by the Council last year of adding full-time employees of the Larkspur Corte Madera School District as recipients of the discounted use of Park and Recreation programming. And we did receive great feedback that teachers in the district um, who have children in the school district can use that discount for aftercare and they appreciated being considered for, for that. So um, I think that covers all the associated increases and what's being maintained the same. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions as best I'm able to. Great. Thanks so much, Rebecca. I'm just going to ask one quick question to start. Just want to clarify, this discussion is solely about rentals, correct? Nothing about programming or like like um, services. Correct. Okay, great. Thank you. Any questions from council members? Okay, great. Um, I had just a couple quick questions. Um, one, this is actually from uh, from council member or vice mayor Rivazio. Um, she just let me know. She was wondering if we could discuss, is there a way to on our rental form add a line um, in case folks are feeling charitable and want to make a little extra contribution to the town, understanding that like if you choose to donate extra with your rental, you're kind of effectively subsidizing rentals for other people who may have a harder time paying for rentals. Um, so I, th I thought that was a really nice idea. Um, so that's a question um, that I wanted to forward from the vice mayor. Um, my only other question, I'm just curious if we have, if this is a routine item, I'll wait for you. Okay, thank you. Do you want us to answer that question now or you want to keep going? I think, keep going. I think the, the question has been asked. I will leave it to you guys to, to think about it and implement if it makes sense. Um, a uh, question, I think, primarily for Amy, though, was I'm just curious if this is a routine item where we update it uh, once a year and typically there aren't major changes um, and typically maybe it doesn't come with any policy changes. Could this feasibly go on consent in future years? Um, I, uh, fees are complicated. Taxes are complicated. Um, and I always have to look everything up before I give advice. But uh, Prop 26 put in some new requirements basically saying that any charge is a tax unless it goes into certain categories. And those fees have certain requirements. So most of the time, the answer would be no. There is one exception, and that is um, there's, there's no constraints on a charge imposed for entrance to or use of local government property for the purchase, rental, or lease of local government property. In other words, you can charge what the market will bear, whereas other fees that we charge, we often have to ensure that the, the fee doesn't exceed the cost of providing the services, and that's why we do these fee studies and fee assessments. Um, that because of this exception, that uh, we can sort of charge whatever the market will bear, although we probably don't here. We subsidize, particularly for our nonprofits and our residents. Um, this might be one fee that we could do on consent. Um, I just want to qualify it because most often we've got to do the notice requirements and so forth. Right. Okay. Thank you. Well, I think I would I would make that request if further investigation finds that it is doable, just because we go out of our way to keep our fees 
low we're not charging what the market will bear we're really charging the bare minimum um that we that we think is fair um and then obviously right if we had to do this with a policy change or if we felt we needed to make a significant raise then we could absolutely not put it on consent to make sure it gets a full public hearing but i think i will i've asked the question and i will leave it to whoever happens to be mayor when this item next comes up and in, in to that point even on the consent calendar it can still be pulled into exactly right exactly so then very much if we have an issue it can be brought back up right. so i only ask because i know you guys have you know you have a lot of on your plates and these meetings are already long and i always am looking for ways to make things more efficient anyways thank you that's my uh, only other question no other questions from council members Awesome. Sweet. So we will open this up for public comment. I do not see anyone present wishing to comment. Lorena, do we have any public comment from Zoom or email? We do not have any Zoom um, hands raised and we have no email public comment for this item. Okay, great. Thank you. Then I will close public comment and bring it back uh, to council for discussion and a possible motion. Um, well, I'll just say that it sounds like the fees have been the same for a very long time, and it sounds like yeah, it is time to relook, you know, take another look because things have changed. So um, I think these fees sound very reasonable, and um, I can support them. Yeah. So with that, I'll I'll make a a motion to adopt the resolution number fifty six twenty twenty three approving a revised parks and recreation fee schedule for fiscal year 2024-2025. A second. Thank you, Council Member Pasisa is absent. Council Member Lee? Yes. Council Member Thomas? Yes. Vice Mayor Vazio is absent. Mayor Beckman? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Great. Thank you. That brings us to item 6B on tonight's agenda, which is discussion and possible action by the mayor to appoint council members to serve on joint power authority boards, standing committees, and as liaisons to town advisory bodies for the coming year. Um, so we don't have a staff report on this, right? We do. Oh, take um, it away. Thank you, Mayor Beckman, um, council members. Um, before you is item 6B. This is the item where the mayor, um, at the direction of the mayor, members of the town council, as well as staff, selected community members are appointment appointed to represent the town on various JPA boards, standing committees, ad hoc committees, and town advisory bodies and other committees um, that might exist. Um, in the staff report, there is a list of the current appointments. Um, we do, I will note that we have a vacancy on the Marin County Commission on Aging, which staff has published several announcements on, and we've been unsuccessful in getting any interest. Um, that appointment is a three-year commitment, I believe. Some changes were made recently. Um, and then I also included information um, that included the job description that was approved by council in February of this year for the liaison role um, for the town advisory bodies, which include the Parks and Recreation Commission, the um, Climate Action Committee, Flood Control Board, Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee, and um, the Sales Tax Citizens Oversight Committee. And um, at the February 21st meeting, council gave consensus. It wasn't in a formal policy, but um, the consensus was that they kind of agreed to rotate um, and not assume a fixed appointment on the advisory bodies being served. So I just wanted to note that. Um, and I did review the meeting minutes um, in regards to that. And then I also wanted to note that um, we do have a town hall artwork ad hoc where Mayor Beckman and Vice Mayor Avazio currently serve, and I um, left that out of the list, so I just wanted to apologize for that. And um, I think the purpose of this item is for you to go over all the appointments and then propose and um, direct any changes that you think are appropriate. Great. Thanks, Lorena. So I'll do that in the discussion portion. Um, first, any questions from council members? Awesome. Seeing none, uh, we are going to open this up for public comment. We have no one wishing to comment in the chambers. Do we have anyone online wishing to comment? 
We do not have any hands raised and we didn't receive an email public comment for this item. Okay, thank you. So we'll close public comment and bring this item back to the council. So I think if it works for folks, I'll just kind of go through the list item by item and we'll just run through who was uh, the primary and who was the alternate. And then if there are any changes um, requested, obviously there's only three of us here tonight. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll do our best. Um, and Claire, I, for mine, I was happy with all mine, so I'd keep them if I... Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to go through item by item here. We'll start with the Joint Powers Authority Boards, uh, Central Marine Fire Council. That was myself and uh, Charles with Fred as alternate. Um, I am, I think, going to have to take on a, a bigger one um, in a couple items here from Pat. So I'm wondering if there is uh, either Rosa or uh, would you be interested in being on the Fire Council? Or if not, I can either elevate Fred to primary or put Pat on it. Um. What do you know? Can you tell me what that schedule is? They meet quarterly. Correct. And they meet after the police council meetings, um, typically at the Central Marin Police Authority community room. And um, the police council meetings generally aren't typically long. So they usually meet, they meet quarterly at the police station, usually around like 7 or 7.30 and usually for like half an hour to an hour. And it is on the second Thursday of each month. Of, of those months of the morning. yeah i think that'll be fine okay awesome thank you i appreciate it so central and fire council we will have uh thomas and lee as our primaries and we will have casisa as our alternate central Marine police council we have casisa and lee as our primaries and myself as alternate i'm fine with that if everyone else is fine with that mm -hmm. Great. Central Marine Sanitation Agency is myself with Fred uh, as alternate. Um, no changes there. Community Home Development Block, block Grant um, is uh, Councilmember Thomas with Fred as alternate. Are you good with that still? Keep that. Okay, yes. great. Excellent. Uh, so no changes there. MCE, Marine Clean Energy, that is myself uh, with uh, Pat as alternate. No changes there. Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority, uh, that is uh, Fred with Charles as alternate. Is that good? Okay, great. Um, Ross Valley Paramedic Authority, we've got Fred as primary with uh, with Rosa as alternate. Okay, great. Um, and then we've got Transportation Authority of Marin. That has been Pat. Um, she has asked, uh, she said that she has a scheduling conflict. So I'm happy to take that on. That's a big one, unless like anyone else really wants it. Sounds good. Okay, I, I will. Uh, so I'll be our primary for Tam going forward. Oh, and then we do need an alternate. Um, and it sounds like Pat has a uh, scheduling conflict. Would either of you want to be alternate on that? Otherwise, we can tap our good friend Fred. Uh, I'll, I, in, unless you, it's, it's a really great um, committee. I was on it for two years. Um, so if you'd like that experience, to, you know, you get to work with all the other uh, local municipalities and all the, you know, it's very similar to some of these larger joint powers. So if you want that experience, uh, otherwise Eli was my alternate in the past and covered me a couple of times, I'd be happy to return the favor. If... Okay. Yeah. I'm taking, I know I'm taking on another one for Fred. Okay. So yeah, I'll be your alternate. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Charles. So Tam is going to be uh, Beckman as primary and Lee as alternate. Moving on to standing committees, age-friendly Corte Madero, Casisa is primary, Thomas is alternate, still good? Great, thank you. Um, ABAG, Marin Delegates Committee, we've got Rosa as primary and Fred as alternate, still good? Um, if I think it's fine. Okay. I'm wondering if anyone else wanted it, I'm fine. It's just, yeah. Yeah. They don't meet very often. No, they don't. <laughs> they I'm trying to remember. meeting since... Pat might have expressed curiosity about that in like last year or something. Um, so we can we can tap her for that, especially since they don't meet very often. And I know that like last year after we did assignments, she she said she was feeling underemployed. So she may have more bandwidth um, and want to contribute more. If she if 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 she's not interested, then I'll keep it. OK, sounds good. So maybe what we'll do tonight is we'll tentatively say um We'll tentatively say that Pat is going to be our primary for a bag, um, and then if Pat can't do it when when we're able to touch base with her, we can come back and and put Rosa back on it. So, okay, great. And then we can keep Fred as uh, alternate on that. 
um, Chamber of Commerce uh, ex officio director Charles is doing a fantastic job. Um, so I'd like to keep him on that and I'll, I'll remain as his alternate. Um, Disaster Council, I understand you and Fred are swapping. Thank you, Rosa. So uh, Rosa is going to be our primary on Disaster Council. Um, I'm happy to stay on as alternate. Um, let's see, large recording there, school district liaison. Uh, Charles is, is our primary and Pat is our alternate. All good? Great, thank you. Large Procord Madera, uh, School District Financial Advisory Committee. We've got Fred as our primary with Charles as our alternate. Looks good. League of California, uh, Cities North Bay Division. I am our primary. Fred is our alternate. No change there. Um, MCCMC Climate Action Committee. Pat is our alternate. Uh, excuse me. Pat is our primary. I am our alternate. No change there. MCCMC Homeless Committee. Uh, Fred is our primary. Charles is our alternate. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, unless somebody else wants the alternates i he hasn't called me yet but okay i would i think taking on tam i'm i think i'm at my bandwidth uh, so. yeah no i got i got yeah. that okay I, I was, so you need another you need an alternate for no i mean the alternate right like the alternates rarely get called so right. it's not that big of a deal it's just yeah it's fine okay if so, anyone else wanted to do it that's what i'm saying like okay it, yeah Okay. All right. So we'll say no change on MCCMC Homeless Committee. Uh, MCCMC Legislative Committee, our primary is going to be Pat, um, and Rosa is our alternate. Still good. Great. Um, Marin Healthy Youth Partnerships, Rosa is our primary, and Fred is our alternate. I'll keep it. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Refuse and Recycling Committee, I am our primary. Uh, Pat is our alternate. Safe routes to school, Pat is our primary. Charles is our alternate. I'm keeping it. She's done a good job on them. Awesome. Thank you. All right. That is it for standing committees. Um, ad hoc committees not proposing any change. Um, so Fred is our, our council member sitting on that committee. Liaisons to town advisory bodies. We can rotate these if you guys want to. I think the the rationale behind the rotation policy was that we had two council members who both wanted to do parks and rec and they have agreed to just swap. Um, so if we want, we can let them swap and we can all keep our assignments or if folks want to try new things, that is also totally an option. Um, what they were to remind um, BPAC by school pedestrian advisory committee was Charles. I was climate action committee. Rosa was flood control board. Those all sound good? Yep. Okay, so no changes to any of those. Parks and Rec um, for the coming year is going to be Pat, and Sales Tax Oversight Committee for the coming year is going to be Fred. And that is it. And, um, Mayor, just for the record, will there be any changes for the town hall ah, art? No change. That I left out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Beckman. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you guys for helping out. Well done. Great. And is there any interest in becoming an appointee for the Commission on Aging? Otherwise, we will continue to advertise for someone in the community. So yeah. what's their, I think I read something about that, but what is their uh, schedule and where do they meet? Um, give me one second. It's hard to join it. I'm kind of denying that I'm aging. <laughs> it's like if I join the committee, I'm... Like, yeah, I'm really aging. No, because the last person who represented Cormodera on there was like, I think, in his 30s or something, maybe 40s. But he was, yeah. he was a young parent who had grew up in town and parents that still lived in the area and wanted to, he believed in multi-generational aging and, and wanted to get involved. Uh, the difficult part about finding someone in the community to do this unless they're retired or has a flexible job schedule is that their meetings are during the day, their lunchtime meetings. That's, yeah. Uh, that's... They're not, I, I believe they're monthly. Sorry. Correct. Um, the meetings are held on the first Thursday of each month and they begin at 1.30 p.m. They're held at the Marin Wildlife for Wildlife Protection Authority Boardroom, which is at 1600 Los Gamos Drive. Um, and then the commissioners would be whoever gets appointed. It's a three-year term that um, would be done by the Board of Supervisors or the incorporated cities and towns of Marin. Is this one of those positions that could be held by either a council member or a citizen? Correct. Yeah. Um, I think I would be happy to kind of reach out to some folks that I think might be interested. Okay. Um, but I can't commit to a daytime schedule like that. 
Okay. I'm happy to share the information we've been publishing um, with you so you can pass that on. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. Great. Well, thank you, Rosa. Reaching out it would be super helpful on that. Rebecca, I was just going to say that when Lorena and I talked to the director, they, they welcome anyone who is interested in checking it out to come join them for a meeting um, and see what they're about. No pressure. Okay, great. And I actually also gave a presentation to that committee for my day job, and it was a really good group. So um, very engaged. Um, awesome. So that concludes our business items for tonight. We're going to move on to item seven on tonight's agenda, which is council reports, and we'll start with the town manager. Thank you, Mayor Beckman, uh, council members. Um, I don't have much to report other than we are closing our offices to the public for um, starting on Friday to December 22nd through uh, January um, 2nd, and we'll be back on um, January 3rd. I still, um, for any of folks who may be out there listening, we are going to have some limited capacity still to do some inspections on the building side and provide services if if needed on a, um, uh, I know our code enforcement um, officer will also be in the area. He lives locally. It's one of the advantages of having both our code, enf code enforcement officer and our building inspector sort of right in the area. So um, they are around and certainly the phones will be attended to um but via message but we'll just be close to the public so i wanted to give that and we're having our holiday lunch tomorrow for staff and so i think uh mayor beckman will be there so looking forward to see seeing you and and uh yeah just getting ready for the holidays so exciting times it's been a great 2023 awesome thank you and we will uh go to council member reports uh we'll start with charles nothing to report already was it Nothing to report. Sounds good. I have a few. Um, attended the Chamber Holiday Mixer on uh, December 7th and saw my wonderful colleagues uh, and, and staff there. Uh, we had a really good town DEI training um, on December 12th, uh, which was actually preceded by a meeting of the Town Hall um, Design Committee uh, that was really productive. I attended a CMSA meeting later that afternoon. Um, that is it for me. Awesome. Uh, so we will close council reports there. Um, any comments on our draft agenda for the next meeting? Okay, seeing none, we're going to adjourn the council meeting and convene the SD2 meeting. So we are calling to order the Tuesday, December 19th meeting of the Sanitary District Number 2 Board of Commissioners. Can we have a roll call, please? Um... Board member Casisa is absent. Board member Lee? Here. Board member Thomas? Here. Vice President Ravazio is absent. And President Beckman? Here. Thank you. Um, we're going to have open time for public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the public to comment on any items that are not on tonight's agenda. I don't see anyone present in the chambers wishing to pu uh, give public comment. Do we have anyone online for open time? We do. Great. Um, Janie, go ahead whenever you are ready. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, my name's Janie Mangus, and I just have a question. I, I'm i one of the people, uh, the parcels detached, being proposed to be detached from the County Marin and Annex to SD2. So, um, Jamie, that's actually going to be one of our, our uh, agenda items here. So we're going to, in just about two minutes, we're going to get to that item. And then, and that's when we'll ask for your public comment on that. Is that okay? Okay, perfect. Great. Thanks so much. All right. Any other hands up for open time for items that are not on tonight's agenda? We do not have any additional hands up. Okay. No email public comment. Great. Thank you. So I'll close open time. We have no presentations tonight. Um, we have one consent calendar item. This is an item that is routine and has been previously discussed or does not require further discussion. Any members of the board or public may pull it for discussion. Any board members want to pull our one consent item? Seeing none, uh, do we have any public comment on the consent calendar? Um, no, we do not. Great. Thank you. And none present. So we'll close public comment. Can we get a motion on the consent calendar, please? I make a motion to approve the consent calendar of 
the approval of minutes of December 5th, 2023. Item 4A. I'm sorry. Thank you. Item 4A. Great. Do we have a second? Second. Awesome. Thank you. Board Member Casisa is absent. Board Member Lee? Yes. Board Member Thomas? Yes. Vice President Ravazio is absent. President Beckman? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Great, thank you. That brings us to tonight's one and only public hearing, which is consideration and possible action to adopt resolution number 05-2023, um, reorganizing some parcels between different sanitary districts. We're gonna hear a staff report on this item, then we'll take questions from council, and then we'll open it up for public comment on this item. Um, so to start, I'll turn it over to staff. Great, thank you. Uh... Board President Beckman and members of the board, um, RJ Suko here, district manager. Um, so this item is um, to discuss just some uh, inconsistencies that staff has found over recent years. Um, really through the course of our work, um, we come across inconsistencies, you know, just about every year. Um, but this is kind of formalizing them and working with LAFCO and our other agencies to really fix the mapping, um, fix them all the way down to their root, as opposed to just kind of fixing them at the surface level. You know, we, each time we find something, we're, we're always working with property owners and um, our accounting folks to address them as quickly as possible. But really, um, get going through the whole LAFCO process is, is taken several years thus far. Um, and so that's really what this is. It's, it's the formal process behind um, noting a... Uh, a correction in um, mainly what what um, individual properties, which uh, agency, which sanitary agency is serving them. And so given Corte, or Sanitary District 2 um, serves Corte Madera, but also serves um, small portions of Larkspur and County of Marin um, on those boundaries, um, there are potential for um, a property to be believed to go to say a Ross Valley and then upon an inspection realize that they actually aren't and are going to Sanitary District 2 and vice versa. And so again, this is kind of a house cleaning, cleanup effort, um, going through the formal process and um, probably something we'll have to do every few years. But, um, you know, especially um, <clears throat> a larger um, chunk here, given the you know investment we've done in this Sanitary Sewer Master Plan and all the work staff has done to really get our GIS database and um, sanitary records, uh, you know, brought up and and um, revised and brought to the most accurate point they've been in, frankly, ever. Um, and with that, I will uh, answer any questions you have. Great, thank you, RJ. Any questions from the district board? I'm just curious about if some of these parcels had been in misidentified as what district they were in, um, how were they billed? Were they billed which district? Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so yeah, there's a couple different scenarios um, that we're talking about, so I can kind of touch on each. But some, for instance, Redwood High School, it wasn't in any <laughs> map. It didn't lie in Ross Valley. It didn't rely in Sanitary District 2 and it didn't rely in, a, in some county district, but they were conveying their effluent to Sanitary District, Sanitary District 2 and they were paying us, but we hadn't, you know, in ages just memorialized them as part of our Sanitary District. Um, there's also parcels that have no service, but in theory one day could have service. And so there was a cleanup effort to really kind of put them on one side of the fence or the other. Um, then you have other ones where, I think I mentioned before, you, they were believed to be, for instance, Sanitary District 2, turns out they were Ross Valley. Upon some inspection or some analysis, staff caught it. Um, the homeowner had been paying the prior raid, and so sometimes we would go back as far as three years and do an adjustment, um, but some of that's kind of case by case. Um, but we would always try to correct it on the billing and assessment side um, as soon as we can. And it's only now after some time in a lengthy process that we're going back from a 
kind of really clean up a formality side to really fix it, you know, all the way through. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Any other questions? Um, so, so RJ, in, in the aggregate, are we identifying that we're losing uh, people off our service or gaining more properties and, and annexing more into it in the overall kind of analysis? And then my other question was, why, I mean, it seems pretty straightforward, so I'm curious why you would think that we would need to revisit every couple of years. Like, I, maybe I don't understand how quickly sewer systems can be modified and tracked but I would think yeah. that that wouldn't happen. So but I'm curious. Good question. Um, so let me see which one to tackle first. Um, so I just want to kind of remind, we're talking about private sewer laterals. So even when we, though we did this robust um, master plan process, that really wasn't targeted at identifying where all the ladder laterals um, are coming from. You know, it definitely, you know, should have cleaned up 99% of where our mains are, um, but, you know, not the 6,000 or so um, properties that get served. You know, those kind of happen through the course of being triggered by the private sewer ladder ordinance or a CFP project or other things. Um, and so even though since 2018, I think we're just over 1300 sewer laterals that have been triggered, you know, that's that's still only a quarter or so, or, you know, maybe even a little less than a quarter of, of our overall district. So we're, we're bound to find some more. And I think every year we're likely to find a couple. Um, and then on the other, um, as far as the balance, I actually didn't go item by item, but I mean, I, you know, I think if you look at the table, you know, it's plus or minus a handful. And um, I, I don't think it has a significant change on any budget. And I think it's just trying to be as accurate as possible. And those that we're serving, we should charge. And those that we're not serving, we shouldn't charge, you know? Plain <laughs> answers. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, seeing no other questions from the council, we're gonna bring this, uh, open this item up to public comment and we will start with Janie. Thank you for your patience. Hey Janie, whenever you're ready. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, and thank you, that was in helpful information that you just gave me. And I think that I might fall in, my property might fall into that same category as what Redwood High School was. Um, because I, I got this letter a month or so ago about doing this. And so I said, okay, sounds like I'm supposed to. So, um, but so in here, it says it's parcels detached from the County of Marin and annexed to SD2, which I'm a part of that one. But I looked on my property tax bill and I pay $500 to SD2 already. So am I one that just has to be memorialized properly because I'm already paying it? <laughs> Okay, got it, Janie. Any any other um, elements to your comment? So what we do is we take all the public comment and then we'll close public comment and turn it back over to staff and they can address your question. Was there anything else you wanted to ask or discuss? Well, I, did, I just wanted to be sure that since I'm already paying, if I do this, that is that going to affect that I'm going to have to pay more or it's, it, does anything change as far gotcha. as I'm okay, concerned? We'll, we'll ask RJ to, to speak to that um, as soon as we end public comment here. Thank you. Okay. Great. Any other um, members of the public wanting to comment, Lorena? We do not have any additional hands raised or emailed public comment for this item. Perfect. Thank you. So I'll close public comment uh, and I will ask RJ um, if you can. Could you just speak to uh, Janie's question, please? Yeah. Um, you know, I, Janie, I, I don't, I didn't hear or, or recall your address, but um, in the table, um, you would be, if you weren't in a prior district and you believe Sand Hill District 2 is serving you, and we can verify that through parcel numbers and stuff, and I'm happy to take your info down and, and connect with you. Um, you. You really won't see any change if you're already paying. Um, the only scenario where you would is if we found out, which it doesn't sound like is your scenario, uh, we found out that we everyone thought you were connected to Sand Hill District 2, and turns out you were connected to Ross Valley, in which case we would not charge you both. You'd 
switch to the district that is serving you. Um, but again, I, I do, from what you said, it sounds like um, nothing should change. You're just formally being included in the sanitary district um, service area. And it sounds like you've already been. And OJ, would you mind just providing the best email and phone number that Janie should use if she wanted to reach out for any further information? Yeah, she can email me directly, rsuko, that's S-U-O-K-K-O, at quartermadera.gov. Um, she can also go Sanitary District 2 webpage, and any any one of those emails listed, um, they'll they'll forward it to me. Okay, great. Thanks so much, RJ. Um, any comments or discussion uh, from council members? Otherwise, we are looking for a motion. I just want to say thank you again, RJ. Uh, I always like when we're cleaning up and organizing and, and just being uh, true to this, uh, you know. Uh, and after seeing that presentation a month or two ago and seeing some of the downstream, uh, you know, um, flows from it, it, it's really exciting just to see how that's probably happening across the board as far as how you're delivering the system. So thank you once again. Just thank you as always, um, RJ, you make understanding technical things very easy for the layman and I really appreciate you. Great, would anyone like to make a motion on resolution number 05, 2023? Sure. I'll make a motion uh, to adopt resolution 5 2023 requesting the local agency formation commission LAFCO to initiate proceedings for reorganization of certain parcels between Ross Valley Sanitary District and Sanitary District number no. two town of Corte Madera in accordance with Cortesi Knox Hertzberg Act. I also make a motion to authorize the district manager to execute the tax exchange agreement and initiate the proceeding for reorganization of certain parcels between the County of Marin and Sanitary District Number 2 in accordance with the Zero Property Tax Exchange Master Agreement for jurisdictional changes for annexation filed with LAFCO involving special districts in 2014. Second that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, board Member Cassisa is absent. Board Member Lee. Yes. Board Member Thomas. Yes. Vice President Ravazio is absent. President Beckman. Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Great. Thank you. And thank you, RJ. Um, great. That concludes our public hearings. We have no business items tonight. Do we have a district manager report? Um, just one item. I wanted to echo, I think, mention it in prior meetings that um, we, we are planning to have some public outreach regarding uh, rates and CIP goals and potentially some you know, need for rate increases increases in the early part of 2024. So um, that is coming and um, we hope everyone can tune in and participate. It's, you know, th there's, <clears throat> there's a need out there um, for improvements to our infrastructure to make sure things are reliable. And um, <clears throat> we want to make sure that we have the, the funding to make those improvements. So things um, keep flowing downstream. Great. Thank you, RJ. Any board member reports? Nothing here. Any comments on the draft agenda for the next meeting? And we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.